Hi there, I'm Judy, the children's minister at Foothills. Spring is in the air. I hope you are enjoying more time outside. Are you in a sport? Or like riding your bike or taking your dog for a walk in the sunshine? Whatever it is, have fun doing it. Well, it's a new month and that means new themes in our kids' classrooms upstairs and down. In our first look classrooms, our theme is We Go Together. What are some things that you know that go together? I know, I'll say an item and you shout out what goes with it. Here we go. Peanut butter and jelly, that's right. Cookies and milk, you got it. Chips and salsa, you guys did great. But the best things that go together are you and Jesus. Did you know he wants to be your friend forever? In our 252 kids and preteen classrooms, our theme is puzzled. Believe there's a bigger picture. You know, sometimes things in life are puzzling until we see the bigger picture. Our life app this month is hope. And we define hope like this. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. We will be hearing Bible stories of hope all month long, from the story of Lazarus to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Both stories are so full of hope for us. I hope you will join us on Sundays in person, but if you can't, you can watch our Sunday experiences right now. Enjoy!
I'm Poppy. My aunt gave me this fun baby bathtub so I could pretend to give all my toy friends a bath. I found all this fun stuff that goes together with a bath. Like, what's this? A rubber ducky. That's right. Rubber duckies go together with bath time. Do you know what else goes together with bath time? Bubbles! Bubbles are so much fun! Let's all splash and make lots of pretend bubbles. Ready? Splish, splash, splish, splash. Bubbles go together with bath time too. There's another thing that goes together with bath time. A fuzzy towel! Towels go together with bath time. Grrr. Alrighty, now who needs a bath? Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Poppy! Who? Who? Playing with things that go together, are you? Hey, Ollie! I sure am! All these things go together with my new baby bathtub! Tubs and duckies go together? It's true! But I know a friend who goes together with you! Listen to this story! Just follow me through! Who? Who? Follow me through! Follow me through who? Oh, got a Bible story for me and you! Uno, dos, tres... Oh, hola, friends! It's so good to see you! My name's Luis. I'm getting a fun game ready for my niece's birthday party. <laughs> it's called Ducks and Water. They just go together, don't they? <laughs> We're going to see how many of these ducks we can get to float in this little pool. <laughs> this reminds me of a story from the Bible. Do you want to help me build it? Great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready? Uno! Dos, tres, hammer! Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now we just need our story tools. Yep, that's perfect. Okay, so today's true story from the Bible begins at a beach where... Jesus had been teaching people all day. Jesus told his friends, the disciples, to get in a boat to go across the lake. Jesus said goodbye to the crowd, and he went up to a mountain to pray by himself. While the disciples were in the boat, the wind began to blow. Can you help me be the wind? Put your arms up like this and be the wind. Woo, woo, woo. Ready? One, two, three. Three, go! <laughs> Keep going! <laughs> okay, stop. The wind was rocking the boat back and forth, and the disciples didn't know what to do. Just then, they saw something on the water. Do you see it? Raise your hand if you see it. Oh, it looks like... A person! Jesus' friends were scared. Oh, can you show me your scared faces? That's exactly how they felt. And they thought, could there really be a person walking on water? Huh. Who do you think it was walking on the water towards them? Hmm. Let's see. All of a sudden, the person said, it's me. Don't be afraid. It was Jesus walking on the water. The disciples were so happy to see Jesus and amazed to see him walking on water because they didn't think anyone could walk on the water. <laughs> well, right away, Peter said, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to walk to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. Peter stepped out of the boat. Guess what? Peter started walking on the water towards Jesus. Only Jesus could help Peter walk on the water. But then, 
Peter looked around and he saw the wind and he got scared and he started to sink in the water. But Jesus reached out and caught him so he wouldn't sink. (laughs) Then they got back in the boat together. (laughs) Wow! Jesus was with Peter and Jesus is always with us too. Jesus wants to be our friend forever. Hey there, Ollie, tell me. Who wants to be your friend forever? Jesus wants to be my friend forever. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who wants to be your friend forever? Jesus wants to be my friend forever. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Adios. So there's your story. And it's all true. Jesus was always with Peter, and Jesus is always with you, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow, Jesus is always with Peter, and Jesus is always with us. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say, got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Bubbles and bath time go together. But the best thing that goes together are my friend Jesus and me. See you guys next time. Bye! I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. I am with you always, Matthew 28, 20. What do you focus on when you're putting together a puzzle? Maybe you look for the edge pieces so you can mark the boundaries of the picture. Maybe you grab one piece at a time and try over and over to match it up so that it makes sense. Maybe you get stuck on that missing piece and can't move on until you fix it. Maybe you avoid that one section you know is going to be super hard. Maybe you lose patience because it's taking so long to see the big picture. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? Sometimes our lives can feel like one big confusing puzzle. You've got one piece here and another over here and they don't make sense. Like, how could they even be a part of the same picture? You've got big frustrating gaps and you just can't see where it's all going. But that's where hope comes in. Even when we don't see how it all fits together, God does. In fact, God has promised that he is working all things together for good for those who love him. Every single thing in your life has a place. Even that really weird piece fits somewhere. And even if your life feels like this right now, in the end, God will make everything right. We'll see how even the most confusing pieces fit together to form something amazing and beautiful. And because we know that God can see the big picture and is always at work, we know hope is alive. And when we choose hope, even in the darkest moments, others can see God at work. That's why hope is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud.
My name is Jacob. Hey, question for you. Who likes puzzles? Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know I do. <laughs> I like all kinds of puzzles. Jigsaw puzzles and Sudoku puzzles, crossword puzzles. Oh, those little pieces of metal that get all stuck together and you have to spend hours twisting them apart. Yes! Woo! I love puzzles. Every single puzzle has a solution, no matter how challenging. Puzzles remind me of hope. Hope is believing that something good can come out of something bad. You see, sometimes life can feel like a puzzle, kind of like you're trapped in a maze. But when you have hope, you know that there's always going to be a way out. Got it, Jacob. Woo! Or what if you've got so many problems that you feel like you're underwater? Well, hope reminds you 
to just keep swimming. And then there are those problems that just seem impossible to figure out, like this bottle puzzle right here. The object of this puzzle is to get the ball into the neck of the bottle. Problem is, there always seems to be something in the way. I've been trying, <laughs> this is fun, to get this one, no, almost there, solved for like 10 years. No, come on. And then go. Oh. <gasps> Maybe this one is impossible. In today's story, we'll hear about two sisters and their brother who found themselves in a situation that seemed impossible. So, they called on Jesus, who didn't do what they expected. I bet this bottle wouldn't expect if I got hammered right now. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 11, verses 1. Through 45. Though Jesus had no home of his own when he began to travel and teach, there were a few places that he frequently stayed at. One was the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Uh, come in, come in. We want to hear everything. Stay as long as you like. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived in the town of Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem. But the last time that Jesus had been in Jerusalem, it didn't end so well with the religious leaders. My sheep listened to my voice. My Father who has given them to me is greater than anyone. I and the Father are one. He just claimed to be God. What an evil thing to say. The leaders actually picked up stones, threatening to kill Jesus. Jesus knew this was not the time to confront them, so he and his friends left and crossed over the Jordan River. While they were gone, Lazarus became very sick. I, I just need to lie down. Oh, he's burning up. We need cool water. I'll sit with him tonight. But Lazarus didn't get better. He became more and more feverish and restless. So hot. Mary and Martha became so worried about their brother that they sent a messenger after Jesus. After a long journey, the messenger finally reached Jesus and his friends. Martha and Mary say, Lord, the one you love is sick. Jesus turned to his friends. This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. God's son will receive glory because of it. Perhaps Jesus' friends thought he would just heal Lazarus from a distance, but two days later, Jesus told his friends. Lazarus is dead. Wait, what? For your benefit, I am glad I was not there. Now you will believe but let us go to him. Even though the religious leaders had tried to kill Jesus in Jerusalem, he chose to return for the sake of his friend. When Jesus and his friends at last neared Bethany, they were quickly spotted by the men and women who had come to comfort Lazarus' sisters. Martha, Mary, Jesus is here. If only he had come earlier. I have got some things to say to him. Martha leapt up and ran to meet Jesus outside the village. Lord, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you anything you ask for. Your brother will rise again. I know, when people are raised from the dead on the last day. Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even if they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God who is supposed to come. Jesus nodded and looked past her. Where is Mary? Martha raced back to get her sister. Uh, the teacher is here. He's asking for you. Mary couldn't stop her tears, but she got up and hurried to meet Jesus, followed by her family and friends. 
When she reached him, she fell at his feet. Lord, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her tears and the deep grief of the others around her, and his own spirit became very sad. Where have you put him? Come and see, Lord. As Jesus followed the crowd, his deep sadness overflowed into tears, and everyone noticed. See how much he loved Lazarus? Maybe. I mean, he made a blind man see. Couldn't he have showed up sooner and kept Lazarus from dying? Soon, the group reached the cave where Lazarus's body had been laid. A large rock blocked the entrance. Take away the stone. But Lord, he's been in there four days. By now, uh, there's a bad smell. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory? Martha swallowed hard and nodded to several of the men standing nearby. Go ahead. The men braced themselves and shoved hard against the stone. The wide mouth of the cave gaped open. Jesus stood in front of it and then looked up to heaven. Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here. I said it so they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus bent down and called loudly into the tomb. Lazarus, come out. For a moment, they heard nothing. And then, impossibly, they heard rustling. Lazarus stumbled out of the cave. Lazarus! Lazarus's face and body were still wrapped in strips of linen, but he was very much alive. Take off the burial clothes and let him go. Swiftly, Lazarus's friends and family unwrapped the strips of linen. Ah, uh, where am I? Jesus? Mary and Martha hugged their brother, laughing and crying. You're alive! You died. Jesus brought you back to life. Many of the people who had come to comfort Mary and Martha saw the incredible thing that Jesus has done. And so, they believed in him. Oh, okay. When Jesus found out that his friend Lazarus was dying, he said, this sickness will not end in death. And he was right, wasn't he? When Lazarus died, it wasn't the end. After four days, God brought Lazarus back from the dead. Yes! Woo! And because of that, we can know just how powerful God is. God made something good come out of something bad. And you know what? God can still do that today. He may not bring someone back from the dead exactly, but when something bad happens to you or the world, God can help make something good come from it. When you're having a hard time with a subject in school, it may feel like a maze. But God can help you stick with it and learn from the experience. When you have problems at home or in your family, they can get so bad that you feel like you're underwater. But remember that a very powerful God is with you through whatever you're going through. For us, a problem may seem like it's impossible, but for God, the solution is simple. Got it. Here's the one thing to remember today. Whatever happens, remember how powerful God is. Whatever happens, God is so powerful, he can make good come from bad. You may not see or understand how God is working, but you've seen how God has worked in the past. So you know you can trust God no matter what. I guess I'll have to move on to a different puzzle now that I've solved this one. Oh my goodness. Hi. No, I can do it again. No, just wait, just wait. Now that I've solved this one. Hold on. Solve this one. Okay. <laughs> you saw me do it now. You saw Jacob do it. Jake, come on, Jake. come on. Come on. <laughs> just, uh... where's that hammer?
What do you focus on when you're putting together a puzzle? Maybe you look for the edge pieces so you can mark the boundaries of the picture. Maybe you grab one piece at a time and try over and over to match it up so that it makes sense. Maybe you get stuck on that missing piece and can't move on until you fix it. Maybe you avoid that one section you know is going to be super hard. Or maybe you lose patience because it's taking so long to see the big picture. You see where I'm going with this, don't you? Sometimes our lives can feel like one big confusing puzzle. You've got one piece here and another over here and they don't make sense. Like how could they even be a part of the same picture? You've got big frustrating gaps and you just can't see where it's all going. But that's where hope comes in. Even when we don't see how it all fits together, God does. In fact, God has promised that he is working all things together for good for those who love him. Every single thing in your life has a place. Even that really weird piece fits somewhere. Yes. And even if your life feels like this right now, in the end, God will make everything right. We'll see how even the most confusing pieces fit together to form something amazing and beautiful. And because we know that God can see the big picture and is always at work, we know hope is alive. And when we choose hope, even in the darkest moments, others can see God at work. That's why hope is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. When the night is darkest and I feel weary, I'm not alone. Cause you are
Who? Yes. Who? Yes. 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 <laughs> oh, did you figure it out? Yes. Brandon, I did it. After decades of attempting multitudes of algorithms, I have finally succeeded in solving the puzzle that experts have deemed unsolvable. Uh, I don't know about that. I, John of the Basement Studio, dreamer of dreams, wronger of rights, and eater of cord nuts, have entered the labyrinthian abyss and have emerged triumphant. Oh, cool. Can I see? Oops. Hey everybody, I'm Brandon. And I'm John. Welcome to the So-and-So Show. Yeah. Working on a masterpiece there, John? Oh yeah. Well, you know how I've always wanted to be an artist. Nope. It's like this voice inside me screaming, let me create, but I've kind of been ignoring it, you know, pushing it into the background. Until now. That's right, it's time. I've got to show the world that I'm more than just a guy who eats junk food and falls down a lot. I, oh, oh, oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, look at that. Huh. I am an artiste. Hmm. Well, this is perfect. How so? Well, because of our guest today, you'll get the chance to show off your work. Oh! Do you our guest again? You'll see. Please welcome someone who knows stuff. Hey! Hey! Come on in. Mm -hmm. Have a seat. Yeah, watch out for the floor donuts. <laughs> mm. ah. All right, so uh, tell us who are you and what do you know? My name is Kim, and I'm an art collector. Oh, very cool. An art collector? No kidding, that's, wow, you know what, I, I, I love art. I've actually been, you know what, you know what, I, 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 I like this, you know what, this is incredible. So uh, what kind of art do you like to collect? Oh, all kinds, um, mm -hmm. paintings, photographs, pottery. Pottery? Hey, I've been working on some pottery. Actually, I'm an artiste. Mm -hmm. oh. okay. Very nice. Yes, it's an elephant. Yeah, would you, do you think this is something you'd like to, uh, you know, collect? Oh, um, wow. I don't know. Um, uh, well, it's very, uh, mm -hmm. uh, are you just starting out? <laughs> well, sort of. I mean, I've been an artist my whole life, but this is the very first thing I've actually made. Oh, uh, well, this is a great first effort. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just not sure if it really fits in with my collection. Okay. Uh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hope I didn't. No, 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 no. An artist must be able to withstand the harshest criticism. And this is me withstanding. Okay. So, uh, do you have anything with you from your collection that you'd like to show us? Sure do. Mm. This bowl uh -huh. was made by my daughter. Ooh. She's very new to pottery, but this piece really means a lot to me. That's amazing. Yeah, that's cool. That's really, really cute. <laughs> your daughter made that? <laughs> oh. Here's one of my favorite pieces. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. This bowl is kintsugi. Is, uh, what? It's what? Kintsugi. It's an old Japanese art form. The artist takes something broken and creates something new out of it. And uses gold to put all the broken pieces back together. Mm. Wow. Gold? Yep. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, but why fix a broken piece of pottery, you know? Wouldn't it be better to make something new? That's the beauty of kintsugi. See these gold lines? Oh, yeah. That's where the bowl broke. The artist has to piece the broken pieces together just right, and then use a special glue and gold to fill in the cracks. Wow. Kintsugi highlights the cracks and the brokenness rather than covering them up. 
So the places where it was broken actually make the pottery more unique and beautiful, and more valuable even. Oh, wait, more valuable, huh? That's right. Kintsugi artists make something good out of something that seems bad. What is happening? <laughs> I'm making art! Uh, Kintsugi's not so much about breaking things, but rather putting them back together. Oh, that's right! That's right! Hey! I can glue this back together, and then I can make it more valuable. You got any gold? No. Hey, let's make some more things valuable. Oh! No, no! no. A lamp! Kintsugi! <laughs> Uh, John, I don't think. What about the you're... rubber chicken? Yeah, <laughs> Kintsugi. Oh, it didn't. Uh... Oh, oh, this chalk. Ready? Uh, yeah. Oh, Kintsugi chalk. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, stuffed animal. Kintsugi. So, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, the cow. The cow. Will he be Kintsugi all right? Cow. Probably. Okay. Oh, stop. Uh, okay, Kintsugi. Oh, it broke. <laughs> all right, more art. It's, Kintsugi! It's, it's Bible story time with Kellen! Hey guys! Hey, I'm an artist, Kellen! Oh, are you? How are you today, Kellen? I'm doing great. And you know who else is doing great? Who? The So-and-So Show Players! <laughs> They're gonna be helping us out with today's story. And you can read this story for yourself in the book of John. So let's get to it. Jesus had many friends, and one of his close friends was named Lazarus. Lazarus, he had two sisters who were also friends with Jesus, Mary and Martha. One day though, Lazarus got really sick. <laughs> Mary, where are you? Yes, my brother, I am here. <laughs> I feel. <laughs> I feel. Yes, brother? Sick. Hmm. I know. Me and Martha will write a letter to Jesus. He'll know what to do. So Mary and Martha had a message sent to Jesus. Ow. Okay, excuse me, you silly billies. Uh, I got a letter here for uh, Jesus. Ah, that's me. Oh, you have a letter from Bethany. Whoa, 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 whoa. We don't know no Bethany. No, it's the, it's the town, Bethany. No, it's from uh, Mary uh, and uh, Ma uh, mm -hmm. Martha. 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 Okay. Martha, Martha, that's from her. Thank you. You're welcome. What does it say, my lord? Oh, our friend Lazarus is sick. But this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory. Even though his friend was sick, Jesus stayed where he was for two more days. Until, finally, Jesus said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. I must go and wake him up. Oh, wait. You sure that's a good idea? Because, I mean, look, when I'm sick, I love to sleep. Like, I love to sleep. So maybe he just needs to sleep so that he'll feel better. Problem solved. Here we go. We ain't got to go nowhere. Lazarus is dead. What? What? Come again? What? Lazarus is dead. He's dead. Like, for real, for real? And for your benefit, I'm glad I wasn't there. But now... You will believe. Come with me. When Jesus arrived, he found out that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Many had come to comfort Mary and Martha. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. My Rich. Lord, it is I, Martha. I, I wish you would come sooner. Maybe my brother would not have, would not have. Have what? Died. Ooh. But, but I know that even now, God will grant you anything you ask for. Your brother will rise again. I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even if they die. Do you believe this? Yes. 
My Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah and the Son of God. I'll go get Mary. It is I, Mary. <laughs> never seen Jesus this sad. I gotta write this down. Jesus wept. <laughs> Where did they put him? Come and see. Jesus came to the tomb where they had placed Lazarus. It was a cave with a stone in front of the entrance, and a crowd gathered around outside. Right over here. Wait a minute. Are you Mary or Martha? Martha. Take away the stone. Um, but Lord, it, it's going to smell really bad. Lazarus has been in there for four days. Didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see God's glory. Father, I thank you for hearing me. I say this so that the people here will believe that you sent me. Lazarus, come out. Oh. <laughs> He's a mummy! Oh. It is me, Lazarus. I'm alive. Where's Mary? Shouldn't she be here too? Just a moment. <laughs> You're alive. I'm alive. Yay! Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. There were many people there who saw what Jesus did and they believed in him. The end. That's amazing. Wow. Jesus really raised Lazarus from the dead, just like that. Yep. He is that powerful. That's so cool. And to think that we can have a relationship with him today. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing, huh? Yeah. We can put our hopes in Jesus because he is so powerful. Powerful enough to make something good come out of something bad. Just like Kintsugi. Oh, oh Kintsugi. Sure. No, not this. Well, hey, thanks for the story, Kellen. You're welcome. I'll see you guys. You know, it's so easy to forget how powerful God is, especially when times are tough. Yeah, and we all react a little bit differently when bad things happen. Yeah. So, reveal the question. Ooh. How do you react when bad things happen? Uh, do you get scared? Or really angry? Or do you talk about your feelings with someone you love? Or distract yourself with video games? Or you could eat a big bowl of cereal. Mm. Mm -hmm. No matter how you react, remember, you can have hope that God is powerful and with us through everything. I'm Brandon. I'm John. This was the so-and-so show. Hey, Kazuki. What? Hi. Okay, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think somebody will buy this? It's yeah. more valuable, right? Wow. Let's make it twice as priceless. Kintsugi. Oh. See, now it's even more. See, now they'll buy it. That's how you make art. You are an artist. I am an artist. That's how you make art. I... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>